Hey anime lover I am back with new episode of The Eminence in Shadow Season 2. Before we dive into the episode, friends, I'd really like it if you could click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Many of you watch the videos but forget to do that. Kindly support my work and help me reach 1000 subscribers by the end of this year. At the beginning of the episode, we see the Crimson Tower. The tower has been destroyed due to the attack of Shadow. The Crimson Lord is also defeated by the Shadow attack. Shadow starts thinking, I thought the last boss would be here, but it's not. Shadow wonders if there might be an event where we focus on group battles but there is no boss. Still, I'll do an underground check and see. After saying this, Shadow leaves from there. While leaving, he says that if he doesn't find anything there too, he will collect the remaining gold coins and go home. After Shadow leaves, Claire and Mary arrive there. They are searching for Cage New and Queen Elizabeth. Mary says they can't sense the presence of the Crimson Lord. Did those people sacrifice Cage New? What finally happened here? Then, out of nowhere, someone attacks Claire, causing her to lose consciousness. The one who attacked Claire looked like a strange plant-like creature. Then, we see someone emerging from that plant, which surprises Mary. Even she says, we are too late. And the person emerges out of that weird plant is not anyone else but Queen Elizabeth. After that, we see Queen Elizabeth pulling Claire towards her and biting her neck to suck her blood. Just then, Shadow Garden arrives. Beta attacks Queen and saves Claire. Beta inserts a blade inside Queen's head, causing a big blast. She successfully takes the Claire away from Queen Elizabeth. Beta asks her companions about Claire's condition. 664 informs that Claire is breathing but needs emergency first aid. Then, Beta says, all right, but I don't think we can easily retreat from here. Sir Shadow hasn't come here. That means he's busy with something else important. It also means he trusts us to handle this situation. Beta also says that our Lord's sister is dying, and we can't let her die. Beta instructs 664 to look after Claire, and tells 665 and 666 to provide cover. After saying this, Beta attacks Queen, but Queen easily dodges the attack. The other two girls also attack Queen, but she not only blocks their attacks but also captures them with her magical powers, rendering them completely immobile. Then, Beta cuts off the Queen's hand to free them from her captivity. Later, the Beta throws an explosive on the Queen, causing a massive explosion. Seeing this, Mary says that this won't work. I believe you guys are quite strong, but defeating the Queen won't be that easy because the Queen has been a slow riser from the beginning due to her low blood pressure. But when the Queen takes her true form, she easily overpowers her opponent. After that, we see the queen waking up and releasing powerful magical energy. Seeing the queen's magical energy, the beta says that the queen's magical energy is even stronger than Lady Alpha's. Then we see Yakumi also arriving there, and Yakumi finds the queen very dear and adorable, but she is no less than a monster. And Yakumi also says that she has to carefully choose her departure. Suddenly, Juggernaut appears there and says, you guys are having fun without inviting me. Then Juggernaut punches the queen, but the queen is unaffected. Here, the queen uses her powers to slam Juggernaut into the wall, injuring him badly. Seeing this, Ikumi mocks Juggernaut. After that, we see that Queen Elizabeth's power has fully awakened, and then the queen attacks everyone. Beta tries to save everyone with her slime, but the queen's attack is incredibly powerful, breaking through the slime. As a result, everyone falls victim to the queen's onslaught. After her attack, Juggernaut is in bad shape, with one of his legs badly injured. Here, we see that Yakumi had protected herself from the Queen's attack. Yakumi mocks Juggernaut again for his foolish attitude. Mary looks at Beta and says, you're quite injured. Beta replies, I'm okay. Then we see the other girls protecting Claire with their bodies, forming a human shield. Beta says that the Queen has used her magical power, but she's not tired yet. Moreover, she's using our magic to heal herself and getting stronger. Beta tells Rose to take Claire away from there, but Rose refuses, saying, I can still fight. After that, Beta says, no, you have more work to do. After hearing this, Rose falls into deep thought. Meanwhile, Beta launches another attack on the Queen, but the Queen uses her power to damage Beta's hand. Beta looks at her hand and realizes that it's turning into possessed blood, and the same is happening to her other companions. Beta remembers that her body was the same before coming to Shadow Garden. Then Beta wonders if she is controlling the demon's blood and how she can end Lord Shadow's blessing. Later, we see Claire, whose possessed blood starts increasing rapidly. Seeing this, Beta rushes to save Claire, but it was already late. A lot of magical energy starts emanating from her. After that, we see Claire sitting on a bed. As soon as her eyes open, she sees herself sitting on the bed. Seeing her wake up, a person says, you're awake. You had anxiety, that's why you felt like you were possessed. You've been cured for quite some time now, and the person talking to her is not someone else, but Aurora. Claire asks her if she is completely cured, and her possession is gone. She questions who did it. Aurora replies that he is someone Claire has known for a long time. Claire says, no, I don't know him. What are you talking about? 
Aurora responds, simply put, you're adapting, but unfortunately, you've lost control, and soon your body will turn into a rotten mess. That's why I want to help you. However, Claire doesn't believe Aurora's words. She tells her that she doesn't understand anything and asks what is really going on and who this person is. Then Aurora says, you're asking quite useless questions. It seems it will take a lot of time to explain to you. Afterward, Aurora explains Claire's about evolution. Claire says, forget all this, what does it have to do with my current situation? But Aurora continues to explain the same things. Aurora explains that the blood has divided into two points, which is a result of adoption. Possessed and progenitor vampires, which is her bloodline, has split into two parts, and her character stick is also completely different. Aurora says that both types of blood are trying to adapt in your body. But unfortunately, you don't know how to control them, and because of this, your blood has become uncontrollable. Just then, a bell rings, and Aurora says, time is up. Saying this, Aurora starts to leave, but Claire stops her and asks, You had something important to say, tell me, what is it? Claire looks at her hands and notices some marks on them, which started glowing. Claire asks Aurora, what is this? Aurora tells Claire that it will teach her how to control her power. Claire asks Aurora to explain it properly. Then Aurora says, no, there's no time, in outside world things are slipping out of hands. So Claire tells her, come on, at least tell me who you are and why you're helping me. So, Aurora says, my name is Aurora, and I'm helping you because you are a shadows. Hearing this, Claire looks a bit confused. Suddenly, in the dimension where Claire resides, everything starts to shatter. After this, we see a scene in the tower where Aurora appears in Claire's place inside her body. Seeing this, Beta asks Aurora how she got there, where Claire is, and what happened to her. Aurora tells Beta, oh, so you're talking about the my look. It's exactly the same way shadows and you did it. I just have a habit of using this particular body, so I've changed my physics. Then, Aurora tells Queen, now tell me how much you can handle. After hearing this, Queen attacks Aurora. Aurora then says to Queen, sorry, but I'm the original. After saying this, Aurora controls and stops Queen's blood attack, and now she retaliates against Queen, splitting her into two parts. Aurora says, doing this was quite easy for me. Then we see Aurora using the same attack as Shadow, the almighty range attack. Seeing this, Beta tells her that she can't do this. But Aurora doesn't stop, she initiates the attack and says, all. But suddenly, she feels pain, and her attack stops right there. Seeing this, Aurora says, it seems this body can't handle that attack. Beta tells Aurora that she is damaging Claire's body. Aurora reassures her, saying not to worry, such a small injury will heal on its own in a short time. Then we see Queen, who is ready to fight again. Seeing this, Beta says, not again. Aurora tells her, don't worry, the time was enough, my work here is done. I was just buying time for Shadow to come here. And then, we see that Shadow makes a dangerous and flashy entry there. The gold coins on Shadow's clothes were shining. Shadow now says it's time for the awakening. After hearing this, the queen attacks Shadow. Shadow also attacks the queen. But the queen stops Shadow's attack and strikes back, causing the gold coins to break. Seeing this, Beta finds it quite strange. After all, why is Lord Shadow is taking damage upon himself? He could defeat the queen easily. Then, we see the queen attacking Beta and others, but Shadow saved all of them. Beta understands that Shadow is saving them from the queen's attacks because Beta and the other girls are helpless against the queen. Shadow says, I can't lose anyone. Hearing this, Beta says, Shadow-sama, you're amazing. Your heart is so pure and I believe you'll save us. That's when we realize Shadow isn't doing all this to save them, he's doing it to save the gold coins. Shadow says he can't lose the coins. But then, right before Shadow's eyes, one coin breaks. He gets really angry and uses his powers, saying, I won't lose the coins. Shadow reaches Queen in an instant and draws his sword. Now Queen also takes out her weapon. And now, a fierce battle begins between the two of them. Their fight was so intense that it was hard to watch. Then Juggernaut starts asking what exactly Shadow is trying to do. Yakumi agrees that Shadow is quite surprising person. Watching Shadow and Queen's fight was quite interesting. Shadow says to Queen, Queen, your game has gone a bit too far tonight. Queen then asks Shadow his name. Upon hearing this, Shadow says, I am Recover Atomic. Mary, who is standing below, sees all of this. She realizes that Shadow is now going to kill Queen. She screams Queen's name. Then we see all the ghouls in the town turning back into humans. The red moon also changes back to a normal moon. On the other side, we see that Claire has been healed. Beta, standing next to her, says she is not fine at all. We see her hand is disappearing. Then Rose starts saying, heaven is a place where we can meet the people we love. After saying this, she walks away with her companions. We see Mary, who was sitting with the queen before. The queen is now defeated. On the other side, we see Juggernaut. He says, what was the name of Shadow's team again? Oh yes, Shadow Garden. One day, I will definitely fight with them, it will be a lot of fun. After that, we see those two perverted guys who are quite sad because they couldn't fulfill their fantasies. The guys are disappointed. 
Then we see those two knights as well. One of them says, I lost my armor and sword. To which the other guy says, let's celebrate the fact that we survived. Then we see the scene at the station where Keijnu is calmly eating. Meanwhile, Mary and Claire are embracing each other happily. Keijnu says, ghouls, vampires, possessed, they all have different names, but in the end, they're all magic overloaded. They can be cured, but not their affection. Claire feels a tingling sensation in her left arm. She says, it's true I have special powers. Is it my blood trying to take me somewhere? Then they are shown sitting in a cart. Keijnu says to himself, basics, magic circle, special power, Claire will have to endure all this. I can't remove her pain because I can't remove mine either. No, not just mine, all the kids have to do this. It makes the kids strong. Then, Claire tells Keijnu, actually, inside my left hand, some special power has rooted, and I have to solve the mystery of those powers. To which Keijnu says, I know you can do it, and you'll be fine. No matter which path you follow, I'll always be behind you. Hearing this, Claire smiles and now, she holds Keijnu's hand and says, thank you. After this, Claire asks Keijnu about Shadow. Keijnu, do you know Shadow? Who is he? Keijnu says, oh, that guy who burned down our school. Why, what happened? To which Claire says, nothing, forget about it. Now, Keijnu says, I am sure ahead, there will be many trials for sister. She will have to confront her enjoyment, pain, and reality. But her left hand has started tingling, we can't do anything about it because, in the end, children grow up to be adults. We see Queen Elizabeth and Mary on the mountain below. Keijnu says, we have endured a lot, but now everything ends. All's well that ends well. Keijnu says, somehow, I recovered the gold coins, although I needed 3,000 gold coins, only 500 are left. If I get 50 million yen from them, it won't be enough to support me for a lifetime. But if people think about it, maybe it's enough. Moreover, Lawless City isn't going anywhere. If I need money, I'll come back here. In the end, Lawless City is like a piggy bank for me. At the end of the chapter, Shado and Yakumi are shown, and this is where the episode ends. That's for the today video. But before you go don't forget to like the video, and if you are new to the channel subscribe. See you guys in the next video.